Hi, my name is Anne-Marie Charrett and these are my observations on modelling and software testing. This video is available under a Creative Commons license, so feel free to share, but don't forget to attribute. You know it's the right thing. In its simplest form, a model is a representation of something. I like to think of three types of models, mental, formal and physical. A mental model is your representation of the world, in your head. It's based on everything you've done, learned and experienced. For testing, this might relate to our experience and knowledge of the product, experience and knowledge of previous testing, and experience and knowledge of other products and the world around us. Our mental model constantly evolves and morphs as our understanding of the product grows. In testing, we use our mental model a lot, even if we're not consciously doing so. A formal model is someone's extension of their mental model. It follows that all models are in some way inherently flawed and biased. Examples of formal models are state transition diagrams and systems diagrams. Requir requirements are another formal model. These are a representation of what's required in a product and by nature are flawed too. I see physical models as something I can see and touch. The test environment is an example of a physical model as it's a representation of production. I create models to gain understanding. It might be of the product, but it's also to understand the, the intent behind the product. Creating models helps me reason and think logically. It seems to me that the discipline of working to generate a model helps me discover additional information. Perhaps that's why mind maps are so popular. I formulate models through reading, asking and doing. I read a lot, requirements and any document that helps me understand the product. I might then go and derive my own models to get a better understanding. I also ask questions of the product owner and the developer. My personal favourite is to hold a whiteboard session where both the product owner and developer and myself struggle through a product's concepts and relationships. I understand a lot by executing code. The information I get from playing around and testing helps me understand the product in a way that reading documents or asking questions can't. As I mentioned before, models also help me reason through a dimension of the product. Remember the whiteboard session with the developer and the product owner? That's really about asking questions, not only about relationships, but also what might be missing. Can you spot the missing information on this page? No model is complete without looking at relationships. What is the relationship between models and testing? Testing for me is about learning through questions and evaluating that information. To learn, to understand, we create models, be they mental or formal. When we evaluate, we ask questions from our models. Is there a problem? Let's look a little deeper. When we model, we gain understanding that goes, gets added to our mental model. Sometimes this information contradicts or conflicts with the main information we already know. We can then ask, is this conflict a problem? If it is, we raise a bug. If not, we continue testing. Regardless, our understanding, our mental model, has been modified. That about wraps up this short essay. Credits to the authors of Rapid Software Testing for the concept of mental models and testing, and both Michael Bolton and James Buck for working with me on the, product, on the topic of models.